Hello friends, welcome to Science Land. Today I'm going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. This disease is also known as RA. In this video, we are going to talk about the RF and ACPA, which are important when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis, its symptoms, diagnosis and treatments, and etiology and pathology, wherein you have the immune system coming into picture. So all these things I'll be talking in depth. Just to give a brief about systemic autoimmune disease, it's an autoimmune disease which affects a system unlike the organ specific autoimmune diseases which i've mentioned in my earlier videos let's get into the disease so let's assume this is my elbow joint and i have my thin cartilage around the bones there is something which is known as synovium membrane or a synovium membrane cavity it is a tissue lining which protects the joints now in this cavity we have synovia synovia is a lubricant it prevents friction while there is a movement in any of the joints so basically in this disease the inflammation takes place in the joints inflammation further damages cartilage and the bone which is not reversible once the damage is done it's done this is the normal picture of an elbow we will study more in depth as to how the immune system and components come into the picture so RA is the most common systemic autoimmune disease. Like there are other autoimmune diseases like MS, multiple sclerosis, there is SLE and lot many. I'll be discussing that later. But this disease is most common. It occurs usually during this bracket range. Also, women are more affected. There is chronic inflammation of the joints as I mentioned before. Joints of knees, elbows, hands, wrist and ankles. The cause of the disease is not known. Like there are many hypotheses and you know mechanisms given but the exact cause behind this disease is not yet proved. But usually it's genetic and environmental factors combined and it gives the disease. So I'll be talking about the causes now in depth. So the number one cause is like genetic susceptibility. We have a DRB1 gene. It encodes two molecules which is known as HLA-DR4 molecule and HLA-DR1 molecule. Now a gene producing protein right now this protein can be antigenic in these patients and the shared epitopes of these two molecules evoke an immune response. So let's say I have an antigen producing cell which presents the antigen like for example this cell is dendritic cell. Now with the help of MHC it will consider DR4 peptide as an antigen and it will evoke immune response. I want to add one more thing. There is a lot of research which says that the DRB1 gene with smoking becomes a significant risk factor in RA patients. I think it is especially in Caucasian subtype. So the second hypothesis is about whether any infection, be it bacterial or viral, can give rise to RA. So there are a lot of hypotheses regarding the same but none has been proved except one wherein periodontal diseases which is inflammation of gums so there is a lot of research which says that since this is also related to chronic inflammation and this disease is also related to inflammation of gums they have the same mediating uh, factors which is involved in inflammation so if the person is having any periodontal diseases it might give rise to the RA. Now there is a species which is known as Porphyromas gingivalis. This is an important species which has been particularly found which is associated with RA. The third cause is citrullination. So there are standard amino acids like arginine, leucine, proline which are produced by the DNA like DNA code is there it will produce the specific amino acid right. Now there is another non-standard amino amino acid which is known as it is not produced by any DNA okay so how it is produced that is the question we have a standard amino acid which is known as arginine this undergoes a process which is known as citrullination and becomes citrullin citrullination is also known as deimmunation this product is a result of host 
translational modification. Now, this happens under presence of enzymes. Sorry, my marker is not working properly. Uh, the enzyme is known as PAD. Now, the full form is peptidyl arginine deaminase because the process itself is known as deamination. Thus, the enzyme is deaminase. The substrate on which the enzyme work is arginine. That's why arginine deaminase. So this enzyme pad is found in various cells and tissues. I want to give a little more explanation about the citrullinated protein wherein the arginine which was in green in color it turns into citrulline under the presence of pad enzyme. Now this is my citrullinated peptide or an antigen. It will evoke immune response such that antibodies will come and kill the antigen. This is my antibody which is known as anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies. Antibodies working against the citrullinated peptide hence it is known as ACPA. So this ACPA basically is very important during diagnosis. Why CCP? Because it's anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody test. So basically there are two names for this ACPA. One is ACPA, the other is anti the word cyclic is added sometimes so it becomes anti ccp antibodies so that is another cause and obviously this also becomes a base of diagnostic test now the another cause is family history any person who has ra in the family is bound to get the disease five to six times more likely that the coming generations will have ra so we spoke about a lot of causes now a uh, how does immune system exactly come and what all components which all immune cells are there in the picture so i'm going to discuss about that thing just to brief up i have joint and synovium is there cd4 t plus cells are there in that area it has a t-cell receptor t-cell receptor will bind or will attach to the antigen which is presented by mhc2 complex by dendritic cell dendritic cell is an antigen presenting cell thus it is presenting the antigen so the first signal is wherein antigen presenting cell is presenting an antigen to the cd4 plus t cell okay but this is not the only step which is important there is another step which is the co-stimulatory step so uh, there are factors present on apc okay the factor is known as cd86 or cd80 either of one will be present on uh, cd4 plus t cells there will be cd28 so these two will also have to uh, communicate such that the co-stimulation is there and then t-cell activation takes place t-cell activation as in the t helper cells will be further divided into th1 th2 and th17 subsets of the th cells so basically ra has th1 as the main effector cells but there are other research which are going on saying that th17 is also important in the pathology of the disease these three subsets of th cells will further produce cytokinins and once the cytokinins are there in the infected or near the joint more and more immune cells will come in the picture neutrophils macrophages and all those come in the picture and they increase the inflammation such that it becomes chronic talking about diagnosis the first is anti ccp antibody test wherein the patient's acpa are detected using the test okay the second is rheumatoid factor rheumatoid factor is antibody working against an antibody so rheumatoid factor basically is igm pentavalent okay it will target igg of the bodies and it will bind such that it becomes igm igg complex now this particular complex will go near the areas of joint and it will lead to type 3 hypersensitivity reaction meaning chronic inflammation basically when the blood is taken out rf factor is checked now the problem is rf factor is not specific neither sensitive as acpas acpas are 98 percent specific 
to the disease so the first uh, diagnostic line becomes acpa rather than rf talking about treatment there are five major types of drugs which are given to the patients there is no permanent treatment or cure and neither the damage which is done to the bones or cartilage can reversed so dmar Ds meaning disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. It modifies the symptoms. It modifies the cause of the disease. Okay, uh, here are examples of the drugs which are DMARDs. NSAIDs is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. It reduces the inflammation and pain. So basically, ibuprofen and ketoprofen. Corticosteroids is given when NSAIDs. work slowly so if the patient takes nsaid or ibuprofen and the effect of reducing the inflammation is slow then corticosteroids are given which are these three examples there are biologic these are the subsets of dmards these are like newer generation of disease modifying drugs it is basically given in injection or infusion form at the doctor's clinic and the mechanism is quicker as compared to dmards the next is jack inhibitors wherein we have jack pathway for the immune system it inhibits that pathway so this is the example so i guess i've completed most of the things related to the disease if you like the video please subscribe to my channel it means a lot to me any other request you can always comment down below with specific topic like the video share the video and thank you so much for watching bye bye